Everybody, welcome to Snow Talk, the first one of the 2016-17 season. For those of you that are new to Snow Talk, there is a disclaimer I did put on the text version. I hope you read that. But that is the title of this blog that uh, we keep through the entire season, uh, even if there's no snow in the forecast, which is what we have now, obviously. We're talking about record warmth to 85 today. So, uh, But uh, we always flip it over right after Halloween, so just kind of a heads up in case you wonder why we have the title Snow Talk. There's no snow coming. You're crazy. All the usual stuff I usually hear when the first Snow Talk video hits the web. But just kind of letting everybody know that's new to it. Uh, first off, welcome. And then hopefully this makes sense to you when we go through it. As we go through the season, you'll see the snowfall stats there at the bottom of the banner. They will update uh, each and every time we do the video. Obviously, uh, we don't have anything yet uh, listed. But uh, we will uh, see how that changes as we head into time. And uh, there will be a snowboard that I will add to this. It'll be the first thing you'll see as far as what are our chances, and then we'll examine those chances and see if they're valid or not. Um, but I'm not, uh, since we're obviously not even close to even talking about snow right now, I'm not even going to do the snowboard. So um, we need to get just to the point of getting to a, a good frost or freeze potential, and then we'll then we'll discuss snow. So having said that, in case you haven't had a chance to read the uh, winter outlook, it is now on the blog. Um, there's no video with it. It's all text version. There's a lot of information. There's a lot of factors at play this winter season. But there's a couple that we feel that do stand out more than others. And that's what led to our decision on the exact details of what to expect. Kevin Harnett will have a much more detailed outlook on this coming up Thursday on the news at 6 o'clock. So make sure to watch that. So having said that, let's get right into the setup today. It's uh, anything but winter-like. In fact, very strong flow uh, out of the west. Southwest will kick in later today. We don't really have it as much yet, uh, but we will. Very strong southerly and flow will kick in, and these high thin cirrus clouds we get now will keep the sunshine relatively filtered. I, I don't see it's going to be enough to um, end up causing any type of hampering of the temperature later today. Maybe for Indiana, but I think for a lot of us along the river and south, I think we'll be okay temperature wise. Uh, and eventually, we'll get a rain chance in here later this week, though, the way it's looking. All right, looking ahead. So let's talk about that. That's the main focus I want to do with this blog of looking ahead. Because uh, a lot of you want to know, what's next? When's this going to change? Here are the indices, the euro and the GFS. This is the Arctic Oscillation. That black line right there, you want that's the uh, average line, the normal line. You want it to be below that line to get the cold air to be displaced, to be available, to be brought into the United States. At the moment, it is available. But it doesn't always necessarily mean that it's going to come to the United States. Where is it? Siberia. The pattern across the northern part of the globe, because we have to share this cold air with other countries in the northern hemisphere, Europe and Asia, and as we are doing so, uh, and other continents I should say, we are of course dealing with uh, the idea that when the cold air gets displaced, it could go there, it could go here, it can sometimes split and be both places, not often. But in this case, the Arctic Oscillation is negative and it's not here. All right, so in case you're wondering why we're not seeing it, that's the reason why. More importantly, it's hard to see this, but this is the forecast at the very end of it. It is forecast to go back up to the normal line, if not positive. Once it goes into that territory, the cold air bottles and stuff back up again for a while into the Arctic. So not a promising sign for those of you who want cold air anytime soon. The NAO, North Atlantic Oscillation. This too, you want to be on the negative side. This will allow for the blocking pattern, the pattern to slow down a bit. And we can get some of these deeper systems and troughs to dig in the eastern part of the country and can pull in sometimes that colder air. We do have a negative NAL that has taken place, but it's not onshore. It's offshore at the moment, which we call them eastern-based NALs that take place. There's different versions of it, but this one's not one that's helping us. PNA, you want it to be the opposite. You want it to be positive. And we do see the signal for that coming in toward mid-November. But the other two are not lining up for favorable setup. So the outlook on indices alone is not a favorable one for any type of pattern change to colder weather between now and say mid-November. All right, so let's look and see what's gonna happen this week. First off, uh, these are the different model trends. Uh, this is the GFS, Euro, and the Canadian, which doesn't go out that far on a, on a updated often uh, map, but this is the ensemble of those same models, kind of smooths out all the chaos, these details above. But in general, we got a trough. The front is moving in next week. You're all a little more prevalent with the northern branch here at the jet stream. The jet is way up to the north, by the way. Um, so there's energy across the south that's getting stuck and getting cut off. So the question is, uh, is it going to be one feature that's going to wave through here next week on Election Day? Or are we going to see the northern branch go by and then the southern branch slowly work its way in later? Kind of a one-two punch kind of deal. 
And that's what I think may end up happening. And that's where the models are struggling. Because when you look at Election Day, the Europe model is actually bringing this one wave rapidly in here. Now, it's trying to pinch off the southern piece a bit across Texas, but it rapidly moves the northern feature in here with rain. Meanwhile, the uh, GFS, not so fast, holds it back, keeps us dry for Election Day. Big difference there on the two. The ensembles, not a lot of help. You see the general trough that the Euro is picking up on the northern feature, but it also bends back, so you get a sense that there is another low that is tugging on it on the southern fringe we need to keep an eye on. In fact, we start to see that as we get into after Election Day, so next Friday. We begin to see uh, the the GFS showing that tugging, that low, slowly working its way through. Uh, the Euro starts to see it, again, slow. It already has the first one all the way by. And then when you look at the ensembles, again, they still hint that something is there, by all means, and along with a northern branch feature. So kind of a split flow kind of a deal. Uh, the negative NAL really contributing to this as well, by the way, for the cutoff potential. So it's a, d definitely not a, uh, an easy forecast next week on ele Election Day. There's going to be some changes here on the speed of this, uh, the way it's looking on these two features. So stay tuned for adjustments there. Then as we're toward the end of the month, this is what's getting a lot of attention. Everybody's like, oh, you know, we've seen a lot. 1950 keeps coming up a lot. We're going to see this rapid change to colder air. Yes, it's happened before. Is it going to happen again? Well... I don't know that. GFS, you know, operational, pretty aggressive with it coming in. Ensembles, to an extent, yeah, they're pretty aggressive with it. But here's the problem, is that we do have this low pressure here across the west. It's not showing up. Let me back up one map here. Uh, there is a low that's been off the Pacific here in, in uh, the Gulf of Alaska that has been a thorn in our side. As long as this is sitting here, it prevents a big tra or ridge from building in the west all the way into western Canada. Once we see that happen, then boom, there goes the cold air right into our backyards. But so far, with this low being in the area, it's making the West Coast and the Rockies messy on its setup. Therefore, our setup becomes messy and not very well defined when it comes to a cold shot. And I, I'm seeing signals that we're going to see this low pressure back away and give us a chance to get a ridge back into here. But it's not a strong enough signal yet. So we'll see how it plays out. We may, we're seeing hints of it toward mid-November. And when you look at the CFS model that just came in, between now and Thanksgiving, it's going warmer than average over a good chunk of the country. And, and this makes sense. I uh, do think that's going to be the case between now and Thanksgiving. Uh, average temperatures, a, a few uh, cases or occurrences of above average potential on temperatures can certainly happen. But nothing drastic. But then after Thanksgiving, toward the first few days of December, that is when I think we could see a temporary flip. I don't think it's going to be one that's going to lock in, but we could see a cold shot to that point. And if you, were, if you look at the winter forecast, some of our signal analysis we were doing was hinting to that as well. We'll see how it plays out, guys. All right, hope you enjoyed the first snow talk of the day. doesn't have snow in it, but that will change.